Have you ever done a 10K race as part of your training for a 10K race? Have you ever raced a marathon as part of your training for a marathon? And have you ever run a 100 mile race in preparation for a 100 mile race? Well, today we're gonna to find out whether that's such a good idea as we look back at week five of UTMB training. I'm doing my hill reps at the start of week six. So let's have a look at what training looked like for week five. And we didn't do too badly. I managed 130 kilometers of distance with 2,000, over 2,000 meters of elevation gain. If you work in feet, that's around 7,000 feet of elevation gain. And we started on Monday morning filming the previous episode of the UTMB training series, doing hill reps on Monday morning. Monday evening was a steady 10K on the treadmill live on Zwift. Remember, if you wanna watch any of my Zwift runs, join the Zwift Run channel on YouTube and uh, you can see any of my runs live on the treadmill. So with 25K and 350 meters of elevation gain on Monday, we then added to that on Tuesday morning with 500 more meters of elevation gain, 12% on the treadmill on the Zwift Run channel doing the Film My Run 500 event. And then me and my mate Charles went out on Tuesday evening and we did 10 miles flat along the seafront. If you watch the channel regularly, you'll know by now that Wednesday night is treadmill interval night. We go live on Zwift and we do over threshold for 600 meters and under threshold for 600 meters. That's my hard effort for the week. Thursday's all on the treadmill as well. 500 meters climbing in the film My Run 500 in the morning and then a nice easy six or seven K in the evening on Zwift. 10 miles on the hills on Friday morning, just getting into more elevation. Follow me on Strava to check out all my training, which is all documented on there. The link is just here. It was a very relaxed 9K on Zwift on Friday evening, but Saturday I did park run and it was an interesting session on Saturday morning. We didn't travel anywhere different. We did our local park run in Worthing and I decided to run nice and easy with Victoria pretty much at the back of the pack. So we started out and uh, I was just feeling a bit cramped in. There was too many people around and Victoria had found somebody to chat to and I just thought, Do you know what, let's run. So I just sped up a bit. So I worked my way through the crowd and eventually ended up making park run on Saturday morning a progressive session with my final kilometer being all out, absolutely lung busting as hard as I could go. I think I did it in 340 something. So Saturday's park run, we're gonna put that down as a hard effort. And that brought me to about 98K for the week. Perfect for Sunday's long run, which would be my longest run of the training block so far. I had intended to start my long run at about 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, but I was incredibly lazy getting out of bed. I sat around most of the morning drinking coffee and procrastinating. I eventually managed to get out on my run at around 12.30. The problem was I felt a little bit rushed by then and I did something I don't normally do. You know that I'm a big advocate of 80-20 running. So your 80% is in zones one and two and your 20% is hard effort in zones four and five. Very, very rarely do I run in zone three. And because I felt rushed, if you look at Strava and you look at my heart rate, a lot of my heart rate is in zone three because I was pushing a bit harder to try and do the run a bit quicker than normal, which was not great because by the end of the run, I was feeling very fatigued. The last 3K really was tiring. And so much so that yesterday, Monday, today's Tuesday, I would normally have gone out for a hill session um, or at least some kind of run and I felt too fatigued. And that's the problem with running in zone three is that you can too easily get tired, fatigued and not want to go out running the next day. That said, 20 miles done, 600 meters of elevation gain and that was me for the week. So all in, we did 130 kilometers of distance, uh, 45 kilometers on the treadmill and 85 kilometers outside. So you know now we start to build the mileage, we do a lot more mileage outside than on the treadmill. And we're gonna continue that with week six. We're gonna do another 130K and we're gonna climb another 2000 or so meters of elevation gain. But week seven, we have a race. 
I'm running the 100 mile North Downs Way. And that is gonna be at least 160, 165 kilometers on top of whatever training we do in week seven. I imagine that if you're watching this, you are interested in ultra distance running or at least trail running. And I imagine you've probably done a 10K race before. And in your training, I'm sure that you've probably done a 10 kilometer distance slower obviously but as part of your training for your 10k race and similarly i often advocate doing a marathon in your training really slowly and comfortably as part of your training for a marathon so you may be doing a fast road marathon as your race and in training you could do a slow trail marathon for example i would argue that's perfectly okay to do as long as you leave enough time for recovery after your race, before your main A race, before your goal race. So don't do a marathon in training a week before your fast road marathon. <laughs> but you know, if you leave it a month before or three weeks even, sometimes you can recover from a marathon in time to do a marathon. However, 100 miles is a little bit different. I am doing the North Downs Way 100 because I want to do the Centurion Grand Slam. It is just an accident that it happens to fall just a few weeks before UTMB. I am hopeful that I can recover just in time and just well enough from the North Downs Way 100 in order to finish the UTMB 100. That's my main race, that's the race that I want to finish. But I also want to finish the North Downs Way 100 as part of the Centurion Grand Slam. Now, yes, in the long term, running 100 miles will give you the experience, the know-how, the confidence to move on and do a faster 100 or a more difficult 100 in the future. So doing 100 mile races is great because it sets you up for your next step on the ultra adventure. But don't do a 100 mile race in your training block. That's just counterproductive. If you've never run a marathon before, it can be really good to do the marathon distance in your training block to give you confidence that you can cover the distance. And it also is really good for training. I mean, if you do it slowly, you are building mitochondria, you are building capillaries to transport your oxygen, you're building that base aerobic fitness which will help you when it comes to running your fast A race marathon. And similarly, doing a 10K race in preparation for a 10K race, it's not gonna physically damage you. It's not gonna cause you problems. It's gonna make you stronger. It's gonna give you confidence that you can cover the distance. But running a 100 mile race is completely different. If you've never run a 100 mile race before, don't try and do it in training, in your training block before your actual 100 mile race. It's just such a bad idea. It's gonna damage your muscles. If you don't make it, it's gonna ruin your confidence as well. Just hope that the training you put in is enough to get you there. And a 100 mile race is pretty much mostly mental strength anyway. When you get beyond 50 miles, it's all about what's in there and not necessarily what's in your legs. If you'd like to watch a video of what I think is probably the most difficult 100 mile race in the world, click that link just there and I'll see you on the start line next time. Take care everyone, bye bye.